Hi, my name is Ken Condon. I'm the host of a new show, Riding in the Zone. We're going to take you on a journey into the world of motorcycles. Everything from flat track and road racing to riding the open road. We'll introduce you to people and happenings in the motorcycling community. We'll also give you insights on how to be the best rider you can be. Whether you love the speed and grace of the racetrack or the freedom of open spaces, Riding in the Zone will be a window into the wide world of motorcycling. Hey everybody, this is Ken Condon from Riding in the Zone. We have another great guest in the studio today. I want to in introduce you to Paul Pellant. Hey Paul. How are you Ken? I'm doing pretty good. So you're here in the studio because you have a really unique uh, involvement in motorcycling that I, I've been really impressed with and really kind of keeping up with. Um, can you just sort of give us right away what, your, what you do as a motorcyclist and how motorcycling really helps you to fulfill that goal that you're aiming for? Um, sure, right now I am um, traveling the country as a patient advocate for people that have MS. Uh, I was diagnosed with MS uh, 13 years ago and at the time I was a long distance rider. I had been competing in a lot of uh, endurance competitions and things and when I got diagnosed um, I pictured myself in a wheelchair in a few years and uh, so I sold my motorcycles. I, qu I quit riding and um, went, went about seven years before I realized that uh, um, I was doing pretty well. I went on medication for, for MS and uh, uh, doing pretty well and, and um, I wanted to find something I could do to give back to uh, the community and um, I decided to start riding again and uh, realized how much riding um, uh, really kind of helped my uh, my disease state really uh, uh, how much I loved riding and and how much how important it was to uh, to do things you love so um, about six years ago or seven years ago uh, I decided to document a million miles uh, for MS and so I travel the country by motorcycle sharing my uh, story to other patients and hopefully trying to convince them to find something in their life uh, that makes them happy. And you've heard of this as moto medicine, is that right? I do, I do. I, I truly believe that um, every, every minute I'm on the bike, every mile that I spend doing what I love um, is, is putting my disease at bay. You know, riding a motorcycle to me is, um, it's like breathing. I think I started riding motorcycles when I was 21. Um, I had been on a few of my relatives' dirt bikes years before, but it was um, my first motorcycle was actually somebody owed me some money, and uh, instead of paying me 50 bucks, they traded me a beat-up old Honda CB554, actually, that hadn't run in 15 or 20 years. I cleaned it all up, got it running, and jumped on it and went off down the street. I got the bug and within a year or so I bought another bike and another one. I believe it actually, riding a motorcycle can actually do that for, um, for a lot of different conditions and health issues and um, uh, you know I really think it can be part of people's therapy for. And I suppose with other people they're not going to necessarily take up motorcycling, that's really not your point. When you go around the sure. country and you're giving these these talks, they're really for not only MS people, I suppose maybe it is mostly for MS uh, sufferers and their loved ones, um, but you probably inspire them, I would imagine, to find whatever it is in their lives that really gives them their medicine. Sure, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I make it clear I don't expect everyone yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to, <laughs> to go out and buy a motorcycle, it'd be great, you know, but um, no, it, it can be anything, it can be knitting, it can be flying kites, it can be, um, I'll, I'll never forget a, a woman in her uh, probably late 70s in Brooklyn, New York, stood up at one of my meetings and, and said, you're right, Sonny, you're right. She says, I used to be, I used to play pool when I was younger. I'm going back in the pool halls and now I'm going to play pool. Um, so what, yeah, it's, it's just find something in your life um, to make more important than your disease. Mm, got it. Uh -huh. um, so now tell us a little about, a bit about your journeys that you've had. You've done what, 300,000 of your million that's your goal? Yeah, I, I think I'm just about, just about a third of a million. Uh, <laughs> About 328 or 29,000 uh, so far. Um, <clears throat> I started off um, basically just riding to MS events mm -hmm. uh, around my house after work and things like that. Eventually, I, I kind of talked my way into, into being one of the presenters at some of these events. 
and um, being able to share my story. And uh, that kind of snowballed into me traveling all over the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, I started um, basically on a Yamaha uh, Super Tenere and um, I rode the first one for 172,000 miles. Which ended up in the Barber Museum, right? It did. That's pretty impressive. It did. Um, yeah, I'm still kind of, um, yeah. <laughs> kind of blown away with that. Um, uh, I, I had decided to try and um, to do a fundraiser and, and set a world record with it. And um, uh, the bike, you know, uh, it finished. It had 170,000 miles on it when I started, but um, it finished. It set the world record. And then uh, the next day it decided it needed a nap. <laughs> a little nap. <laughs> so uh, it was retired to, uh, to Barber. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's on display there exactly as I wrote it. Um, you know, filthy, dirty with all my yeah. uh, accessories on it. So that's, it is really cool. It was actually during an Iron Butt rally that I had my first attack. I didn't know it at the time. Uh, my hands had gone numb, tingling. I had bouts of confusion, lots of memory issues. And uh, it was shortly after that event that I was uh, diagnosed with MS. I sold my motorcycles. I bought a convertible. Um, I, I had MS. I was diagnosed with a disease that would put me in a wheelchair in five years, I thought. Slowly, I started to miss motorcycles, and I started to miss riding, and um, I drove to Daytona and back to New Hampshire in three days, and that's when I realized that I could still ride. I could still do the long distance, and I, how much I loved it, how much I felt better after getting off that bike. I tried to figure out what I could do to help others with MS. How could I use what I know? How can I, what's my story? How do I fit in? How can I give back and you know it dawned on me that it was the I was sitting on it the answer was a motorcycle and that's when I decided that I would document a million miles for MS the bike being here tells the story that I'm trying to tell uh, across the country and about MS and about people with with challenges in life and about disability and about you know still being able to enjoy life and still being able to do things you want to do I think that's um, I think that bike tells that story. So just for everybody that doesn't know, a Tenere is a Super Tenere is a 1200 sort of adventure bike. It's been, you know, it's sort of been a staple of uh, Yamaha uh, for a little while. It's a really pretty versatile machine. It is. And, and, you know, when I first started this million mile thing, I, I thought, write a letter to the different manufacturers and they'd be throwing motorcycles at yeah. me. Well, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Um, uh, eventually, I realized um, I wasn't going to get any factory support, so I decided to buy a motorcycle I thought that wouldn't need any factory mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Yamaha was a, you know, um, it had a reputation of being pretty bulletproof, so uh, to me that's important. Um, I don't tend to do the right maintenance when I'm supposed to, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I, I'm all over the country, so I don't always have time to um, do, the, do the maintenance when it's supposed to be. So uh, I was looking for something that I could really you know, beat the snot out yeah, of it. <laughs> which you did, you kind of did. And then, so replacing it made some sense. Did Yamaha help you with the second time? The second bike, they did help me out. Um, I got it as a three-year three year leftover. Mm -hmm. So they gave me a, a really good deal on it. Mm -hmm. And um, I outfitted it pretty much exactly the same way as the first bike. Um, uh, for me, it, it made a lot of sense because uh, with my cognitive issues from the MS, um, I, I, I knew the first bike inside and out, so getting the second bike and everything is the same on it made it easier for me to, to work on it and to add all my accessories and electronics and things mm -hmm. and remember where they are. Yeah, the orientation was yeah. there. You, and it was really outfitted. I saw it at the, uh, at the no, um, New York show, the motorcycle show. And uh, you've got extra fuel, you've got all the electronics that help you kind of keep in touch with where you are, sort of. Uh, do you have weather information? Um, I, well, I use, I use my phone. I have apps. I have a, you know, a big iPhone, the bigger ones, and um, I'm able to, to call up uh, different weather apps, so I'm able to see what's going on. Um, which is, cool, which is important for you because you're riding year-round. I mean, this is craziness. When I saw that you ride from New Hampshire, where you live, you know, wherever you're going, usually south, you know, in the wintertime, but you're riding through sometimes the, the beginnings of snowstorms, you know? Yeah, I've, I've gotten caught in a few, yeah. a few storms. Um, 
there have there have been times I haven't been able to make it home, or or I've had to you know get a hotel uh, even even a hundred miles from my house because mm-hmm. uh, it was a foot of snow. Yeah, um, yeah it's it's um, it's important, and uh, you know keeping keeping track of the weather and traffic too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know I, I travel across the country quite a bit, and um, I'm kind of not um, uh, dilly dallying. I'm mm-hmm. I'm pretty much point A to point B. Um, I've got to do a talk in California. I've got to get out there and get back. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, you know, being on the road is expensive also. So yeah. I'd love to spend 20 days going across the country and back, but um, you know, the reality is I don't have the funds to do that or, or the time. Right. So. I want to talk about funding, what you're doing for sure. But since we're on the topic of motorcycles, now you've got the, the touring version, the Yamaha Star, right? So that's a completely different machine. I imagine it suits you pretty well for the long haul, you know, the long Paul hauls, right? But uh, tell us about that. Well, um, <clears throat> so Yamaha has been kind of following me, and, and you know, I put just under three hundred thousand miles on the two Tenere's, mm-hmm. and so they saw that I was kind of getting a lot of uh, people following me and things and asking me my advice and things, and and uh, we had we had been watching, um, and I knew that they were bringing out a new long distance luxury touring bike and the the night that they introduced it um you know they called it a transcontinental uh luxury touring motorcycle the the new star venture and i actually texted to a couple of the guys at yamaha and i said transcontinental touring bike i said i i uh i think i might be the right person for (laughs) to put on that bike what what do you say you uh loan me one for a year i'll put a hundred thousand miles on it and um, they actually um, were, were pretty keen to the idea, and uh, it took a little while, but um, uh, in June uh, they actually donated one to my uh, to my million mile journey. Mm. That's so. really awesome. So I mean, I think for Yamaha and, and a lot of manufacturers like that, you know, they, they the PR that they get from getting somebody like you involved. I mean, it's priceless stuff, and sometimes it gets missed. You know, that they can really get a lot of bang for their you know their donation. Yeah, it's it's you know, and and if you if you read the stuff that I wrote about when I was riding the Tenere's, mm-hmm. you know, I talked about you know if things happened or whatever, or um, you know, a lot of things happen in three hundred thousand miles. Yeah. And um, so I'm pretty honest. I'm pretty um, fairly honest. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm an honest guy. I tell it like it is. Um, I like to add some humor into my stories. Um, and, and I think that, you know, Yamaha could see that it's a, it's, it's a raw mm-hmm. story. And, and, you know, what happens with me and the bike is going to be um, good, good PR for, mm-hmm. for anybody that's uh, on board with me. Right. So. so let's talk a little bit more about your goal, your journey. Um, the million mile thing, that came from a story, actually from a, something you heard that really t- uh, triggered that idea of million miles. It does. Um, I had been going to patient events um, where they have um, basically a free chicken dinner and uh, they'll have a doctor put on a slideshow and then they have a patient um, kind of give a little inspiring talk about their life with MS. And um, I was at one of these events and I, somebody in the, in the audience had asked the doctor, you know, uh, when's the cure? When's the cure? Mm-hmm. And the doctor said, well, you know, to be honest with you, I think a cure for MS is a million miles away. Mm-hmm. And you know, I didn't think much of it at the moment. But later on, I said, well, a million miles, you know, that's, that's far, but I know people that have ridden a mil- million miles and mm-hmm. documented it. And, and that was kind of the beginning of um, thinking about how I could give back to the community. Um, originally, I was going to do like a, try to do 100,000 miles um, in 100 days, mm-hmm. to ride 100,000 miles, 1,000 miles every day for 100 days. And I was explaining this to somebody and they said, Paul, that's awesome, but what are you gonna do next year? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just said, wow, that's, yeah. you know, I do wanna make this uh, a longer term mm-hmm. um, commitment uh, to MS community. And that's, that's when I put everything together and said, you know what, I'm gonna start from zero and I'm gonna document a, a million miles traveling to MS events. Mm-hmm. And so then when you're at these MS events, you become a pretty, you, you speak. I mean, that's really one of your things. It's inspiration to try to get people to look beyond their disease. I do. Um, I've, I've, um, I've actually uh, done over 250 patient events all across the United States, mm-hmm. uh, as far as Alaska, as far as, you know, uh, I, I travel to California five, six times a year. Um, I've never flown. I'm always on, on my bike. bike. And you had a, your license plate before was no car. Right? No car. So yeah. No car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's commitment. Um, yeah. I, I, um, 
I, it, it's important to me that I, I'm, I'm living my story. My story is about, you know, um, I found motorcycling again and I found how much it's helping my disease and, um, and part of my therapy. And so it's important for me to ride to all these events. Um, last year, I, um, I spent 160 nights on the road. I rode um, 80,000 miles. Mm -hmm last year so you must have a really supportive wife I mean because I know you're married I do um, <laughs> my wife is um, she's an angel I mean this is you know this was not part of the deal when we got married um, this was some crazy idea I concocted and uh, we had no idea where it would go um, you know it's been financially it's been a, it's been a burden um, I, I was traveling so much I tried to work part-time and then just uh, about two years ago is when I realized that um, if I'm going to do this, I have to do it full time. So I've really been on the road uh, the past two years full time, and it doesn't it doesn't quite pay the bills. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's another thing, the funding this. So I want to make sure that we get that information out there. Uh, you have the MS five thousand or MS five thousand. Sure, correct? that's every April. And so it's Usually, um, it's actually um, this year I changed it, and it's actually running right now. Right. Uh, the, the MS five thousand is something I started and basically it's um, it's the MS walk yeah. for bikers because yeah. we're you know we're bikers not hikers um, but it's it's uh, it runs 50 days and riders sign up and uh, what they do is they try to document riding um, as many miles as they can over the 50 days mm -hmm. while collecting um, donations from their family and friends mm -hmm. and um, over the past five years the MS 5000 has raised over $110,000 okay. uh, for MS and um, each year it's kind of growing um, and, and you know 100% of the donations always go to a charity. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never wanted other riders to donate to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think some people hate me because I'm on my bike <laughs> all the time traveling <laughs> I, all over the United States. I get a little of that too. Yeah. So I, I, I don't, I've, I've never asked for money for me. It's mm -hmm. always been uh, any donations I collect always go towards mm -hmm. a charity. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that what I do between my speaking and I do keynote also uh, addresses for different, even motorcycle events, um, seminars. Um, I write. Um, I'm starting to do uh, more YouTube and stuff like that. And and I believe that um, that stuff, I you know, um, can be supported by uh, sponsors mm -hmm. and advertising and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think that that's where uh, and speaking fees where I can earn enough income mm -hmm. to to continue. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you do have the, the website is Long Haul Paul. Long Haul Paul. Dot com. Dot com, also um, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter, um, pretty much Long Haul Paul, mm -hmm. one word, no spaces. Right. Otherwise, you get a country western singer, <laughs> Long Haul Paul. Um, yeah. We should probably get together. But um, yeah, no spaces, Long Haul Paul, you'd be able to, to locate me. And um, you know, you can sign up for my blog, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Right, um, and, and actually subscribing also uh, to your website uh, gets people to follow you, follow along with you on your trips, right? Sure. Yep. I have um, I have live tracking even on my website. People can can go and see I'm right here in the mm -hmm. studio. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it helps. Uh, well, it helps my wife too to be able to yep. you know be able to know where I am. Um, sometimes I'm 18, 20 hour days on the bike, um, and it's not always cell service. So the tracking's nice. But people, yeah, they can they can find me, and um, I believe starting next next year. Um, I'll be traveling to a lot of different Yamaha dealers and, I, and that'll all be posted where people can meet up with me mm. and, um, and learn about my journey, um, my thoughts on the new bike, mm. you know, um, I've only got 14,000 miles on it in, in the past uh, couple months, so, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have 50, 60,000 miles by beginning of next summer. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a way that people can, can uh, meet up with me mm. and uh, learn about what I'm doing and, and, and become part of... Uh, my journey. That's awesome. Um, what else would you want to share with, the, these are motorcyclists in, in our audience and non-motorcyclists. Hopefully, you know, somebody might be family of motorcyclists and we have no idea who we're going to stumble across our, our, our uh, show here. What would you want to share with them? Well, um, first of all, motorcycling can be fun, exciting. Um, I think, it, you know, for me it's, it's been, um, Motorcycling has been has been therapy through different parts of my life. Uh, going through a bad marriage, bad divorce, motorcycling was actually what I used then to get me through that. And then with the diagnosis of MS, which, um, you know, I'm doing great. I'm on medication. Uh, I look pretty good. 
Uh, most of my symptoms are, are, um, are hidden. Um, and, and one of the things I want to make clear that not everybody who has MS is like that. Uh, there are a lot of people that are, that are, that are definitely suffering mm -hmm. every day with, with uh, symptoms, numbness, tingling, burning, weakness, uh, inability to walk, mm -hmm. blindness, um, uh, bowel and bladder issues. Um, there's, there's a lot of symptoms that uh, er, people with MS have that uh, we're all different. Every one of us is different. So um, just because I look pretty good today doesn't mean this is, mm -hmm. this is the common face of MS. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gotten better over the years with the medications, but there are still people who medications don't work or were diagnosed earlier before the medications that really have progressed um, uh, you know, to the point of, of really not being able to do a lot of function, uh, everyday functions. So um, you know, we definitely still want a cure and um, I just think that it's important to note that um, everybody with MS is different and, um, uh, and, and that's why I'm fighting. Um, I'm fighting for the people who can't mm. ride, who want to ride. I get a lot of people contact me who used to ride and now they have balance issues and things. And um, I try to, you know, figure out what they can do. And, and, and there are a lot of options out there for um, three wheelers and, yeah. and different things now today there's more and more so um, it doesn't always mean you have to give up mm -hmm. what you love and, and also um, for, for people who have MS in other groups um, you know if, if somebody's a ballerina and they get MS and they can't walk anymore um, it doesn't mean that they have to maybe they can't be a ballerina anymore but they might be able to help out, they might be able to help teach in a school or be a mentor or something. They can still be involved in what they love to do. With me, I used to compete in endurance competitions. Well, my memory is so bad, I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I cannot run a, uh, a long distance of a rally anymore. Um, but I can still ride. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's part of my message too, is that find some way to get involved in what you love. Don't give it up mm -hmm. for good. You know, find a way to get involved. Yeah, that's awesome. The thing about, that you talk about, I'm, I'm a safety and skills guy, and you just mentioned something about limits, and we all have limits, mm -hmm. and, but recognizing them, but not letting them hold you back, and not letting them stop you from what you can do, I mean, that's a big message that I try to also, um, you know, share. Right. Um, when you talk about the sort of ability for others that have more limitations than you do, um, we do have the, you know, this Can-Am Spider sort of mm -hmm. solution now. Yep. Also, speaking of Yamaha, they've got the, the three-wheel thing, the Ni Ni Nikon or Nikon or um, whatever it is. Nikon. 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 Okay. Yeah. It's, the thing with the Nikon, though, it, it actually doesn't balance on its okay, own. So it doesn't walk. You, no. you don't put a lock on it so that you no, can No, it's, it's, ah. it's really more geared towards um, um, high-speed riding and being able to push your, your limits in the corners. Mm -hmm. um, but, but it will fall over if you, okay. yeah. I it's, remember they had some, I know there was a little older, where you actually, when you came to the stop, it locked so that you, I, you didn't, I, you could put your... I think your the, there's an Italian, uh, Aprilia makes the MP3, that's, and I think that one has kind of a lock in the mm -hmm. middle. But yeah, the Nikon is really built, and I was confused too, and I get excited about this yeah, stuff right. because I know people who are right. looking for that type of thing. And they said, no, this was really built as a high performance, mm. um, being able to push yourself into the, into the corners and things like that. Mm. Might be a great bike for training for, uh, yeah. well, for the track I and things. Uh, there's a, a student of mine, street student of mine that sold his, what do you have? Uh, I forget, it was an adventure bike mm. and then he, he bought one. Mm -hmm. And so he's like all excited about it. He kept asking me, what do I think about it? And I said, well, I don't really know. I really bring it down. I want to ride yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't ridden one either. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's awesome. So, um, again, I wonder if we're going to wrap this up a little bit. And uh, I just want to point out, everybody, go to longhaulpaul.com. Uh, Paul's got all sorts of information. He's got videos. If, uh, you know, the, if you want to donate, please do. There's an option to donate to mm -hmm. the MS-5000. You go there, you can select one of the many. How many riders are involved this year? I think, um, there's my memory. So, I think it's six. Like Around 60. Yeah, so it's quite a few. 60 a riders, there, yeah. You can actually donate you know, to yeah. a particular rider. Well, I know a few of the people on that list. Uh, so there are a lot of options there. But I also recommend that you subscribe to Paul's uh, channel, you know, his YouTube channel, and, and really kind of keep up on this. Because this is, as, far, as a motorcyclist, if that's what you are, uh, this is something that really brings motorcycling into it, a whole other realm of how it can be this moto medicine. And I think a lot of us relate to that. You know, when we're in that, you know, that funk or whatever, we get on a bike, as long as it's not a distracting funk, and we can go out there and really it kind of can be a therapy, right? 
It is. I mean, even with the new bike, I've got five different sources of, of music and mm -hmm. everything I could possibly want is on there. And I find myself, you know, on a, a, a 10, 12 hour day, never turning it on. Mm -hmm. And people say, well, you know, you listen to music? I said, no, I actually don't. I, mm -hmm. I don't. What do you listen to? I'm not sure. My, mm -hmm. my, you know, I feel like um, I'm, I'm in sort of a, a zone. I'm, 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 I'm in a, a mindfulness state mm -hmm. and I'm able to kind of relax. And, um, you know, I, I don't close my eyes or anything, but mm -hmm. almost like a meditative feeling. And, and um, I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about home. I'm not thinking about family, uh, friends, enemies, nothing. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just riding yeah. and uh, being in, in the wind and, and, and uh, uh, having, having just the, the then and now. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that's exactly how I feel about it. Riding in the zone was based on that idea. Um, I oftentimes say I'm my best self when I'm on a motorcycle because it does put you in that sort of meditative space. <laughs> All right, I wanted to I want to really thank Paul for coming today uh, and sharing his his message. And again, I really encourage you to go ahead and, and you know go to longhaulpaul.com and check out what Paul's doing. It's quite fascinating. Thanks a lot for coming. All right, well, thanks, All right, Ken. Great, Paul. Enjoyed it. Thanks.